Okay, so um, so firstly, thank you very much indeed for um, inviting me along uh, and Lindsay along to, uh, to to talk to you and to to have a chat to you today. Um, I think probably just to introduce myself um, uh, and Lindsay, uh, my name is Justin Strain. I am a physiotherapist. I work in the chronic pain team um, based in Hythe, uh, but covering quite a, a bit of the Southwest Hampshire area. Um, and uh, alongside my work in the pain team, I am also um, doing a, a clinical academic internship with ARC Wessex. Uh, so this is really a chance for me as a clinician to, to be involved in, uh, in some research um, in my own clinical area. So obviously a very exciting opportunity for me. Uh, and today I'm here to tell you a bit about the project. Um, but before I do that, I ought to let Lindsay introduce herself as well. I just want to say hello and I think I've met you before um, um, because I think you've helped me out tremendously with some of the work that I've been doing. I think I've met you Don and Margaret in the past and certainly Barney. Um, so I'm a lecturer in adult nursing but, but I'm in like a 50-50 post and half my time I'm in a Marie Carmen Portillo's long-term conditions research group but my interest is in respiratory but also digital self-management um, and thinking about how well, my concerns are that we don't do very well, and my concerns are that people aren't really well included and thought about in the processes. So that's why it's really important that we're here to get your opinions on that as well, in terms of this work, if that's okay. Is that okay? Great, thank you, Lindsay. Um, so, and I should say at this stage that in the research team, and uh, we'll, um, we'll, we'll put their names up at the end of the presentation. In the research team, we also have a couple of other people. We have uh, um, Dr. Ewan Sadler, who is an associate professor at the University of Southampton, who is uh, co-supervising me with, uh, along with Lindsay. And we also have two clinicians who work with me in the pain team, Kate Barker, another physiotherapist, and uh, Jane Hazelgrove, who is a medical consultant working in the pain team, who are also being involved in the project. Um, so, uh, a little bit about the project itself. It's a qualitative study of uh, participants' perceptions and experiences of the online group pain management program that's being run uh, within our service, the South West Hampshire Pain Management Service. Um, really what that means in terms of this project is we are looking at doing some interviews with people who have uh, undertaken our pain management program. And we are going to, we're then going to be analysing those interviews, drawing out themes um, from those interviews about people's experiences, people's perceptions of the, of the online group programme that they've done. Alongside this qualitative uh, interview study that, uh, that we're doing, we are also doing a systematic review of uh, existing evidence around people's experiences of online pain management interventions. So that's really looking at other studies that have been done um, the majority of which I have to say have been done in the last three to four years, but there are some going back further than that. Um, so looking at other studies that have been done about online pain management, particularly or, or related areas um, and, uh, and people's experiences of it. So that's the, uh, that's the actual project itself. Um, and if you want to know a little bit more there, there is a, a summary of the project uh, and also a detailed explanation of the search study for the systematic review and the links are on that PowerPoint slide there. Um, and I'd be very happy for the, the PowerPoint slides to be shared um, and emailed around to you if, you, if you'd like to use them. Um, I think it's probably important to say at this stage that the background to this project is that like so many other services, the vast majority of work that we did as a pain management service up until about a year and a half ago was face to face. Um, we did some telephone consultations occasionally. We were just before before COVID nineteen happened. We were just beginning to experiment with a little bit of video consultation. But the idea of running all our groups online and doing a significant proportion of our clinical work online really hadn't caught on at that stage. Um, and, I, and I think this was the same for a lot of clinical services um, across the country. And then, of course, like. Uh, so many other organisations through this last year and a half and the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, we've had to adjust to much more remote working. Uh, we've had to adjust to, um, to offering things online. So 
amongst the things that we've been offering online, our traditional group pain management program, which used to be 10 to 15 people sat in a big room talking to each other uh, with a couple of clinicians, has been an online has been an online group. Um, and really what we wanted to find out was how did doing this online differ for people? Um, perhaps what were the challenges? What were the difficulties about it? What were the good things about it? Um, and, and, and actually within that, what can we do to make that online group the best possible experience? And, and looking to the future, we are thinking about, well, as the COVID-19 pandemic, hopefully it becomes more under control and the, the world opens up a little bit, there will be the opportunity to go back to more face-to-face -face working. But actually, should we be thinking about providing an online group alongside a face-to-face -face group so that people have the choice, you know, are there people who would find it actually more accessible and easier to use an online group than coming in and seeing us face to face. So those are the sorts of questions I think that have been going through certainly my mind over the last year or so as we've uh, um, adjusted to this, uh, the, the, the new way of doing things with COVID-19. Um, so a little bit more information for you about the, the group. Um, the group itself consists of six half day sessions. Um, they're run on a weekly basis and they cover quite a wide variety of pain management strategies. So um, there are there's, there's quite a, a heavy element of psychology. And I mentioned on the slide there that there, there is a focus within the programme of accepting the things that we can't change and working towards activities that we feel are important. So, so really identifying what's important to me, what are my values and working towards those values. And there's very much a focus on trying to improve quality of life on the basis that for many of our patients, we may not be able to, or they may not be able to change their actual pain, but they may be able to change how that, that pain is impacting on their life. So that's very much the, the focus of the group. Within that, there is, as I say, quite a, a strong element of psychology, but there's also lots of practical work um, around sleep management, um, day-to-day -day activity management, exercise, obviously as a physiotherapist, that's uh, that's close to my heart. Um, so it's quite a broad group. Uh, and I should say that the, the old face-to-face -face group was actually fewer sessions, it was four sessions, but the, the four sessions were longer. And one of the things that already we found in changing to an online format is that um, it's, it's harder, I think, for people to spend so much time at the computer doing things in an online format so we, we've already made that adjustment um, as it says on the slide the fourth session is a one-to-one -one meeting uh, via zoom with a clinician um, which is a chance for the uh, which is a chance for that individual to talk about their experiences and um, to identify things that they're working towards uh, and to get some individual support there but the rest of the program is very much delivered as a group so that people get a chance to interact with each other um, bounce ideas off each other and, uh, and to learn from each other. And the last bit of this slide mentions the My Live Well With Pain website. Um, and we have linked our program over this last six months or so to the My Live Well With Pain website. My Live Well With Pain um, is a, it's a, a national website set up by a group of clinicians and patients working in chronic pain or, or with chronic pain conditions. Um, and it, it, it includes a huge number of resources, particularly the 10 footsteps to living well with pain, which we found actually matched very well to what we were delivering anyhow as a programme. So we, we very much tried to link in with that. And the idea of that is that, that um, people, can, people on our pain management programme can go to that website to get additional resources um, if they want to explore further that that gives them lots to explore, uh, and it also offers extra support. So one one of the uh, one of the patients on a, a, a program has linked into My Live Well with Pain and joined an online singing group through the My Live Well with Pain website. Um, so it's that sort of uh, support that you can get, which I think is really helpful. Um, so that's the uh, that's the program itself. That's what we are running for people. The study, as I mentioned earlier, involves some semi-structured interviews so, so some interviews and we are aiming to 
uh, to have up to up to 15 participants um, and obviously depending on people's willingness to be involved in the study we, we may or may not get quite that many but that's certainly our, our ambition um, there are particular areas that we want to explore um, so I, I mentioned that we're looking at the participants experiences and perceptions but particularly of the impact of that on their ability to self-manage their own condition so the idea is that by the end of the program they are feeling more able to uh, to, to to manage the condition themselves it doesn't mean that they, they, they are still under our service they can still access support from our service but we are hoping that people feel a bit more in control if you like by the end of the program um, also we are hoping that it helps people to improve their own levels of activity physically um, their own physical abilities and physical functions so um, we would like to know how people feel it has helped or, or not helped in that regard um, and then another area that we particularly want to know about is what are the uh, the challenges what are the perceived barriers um, to actually engaging with the program particularly around it being an online program are there things about it being online that, that have made it harder to really access or engage with the program and equally have there been things that have made it easier um, because it's online and it would be interesting to see uh, how different people um, respond to that and then this, the the last bit there is about understanding the uh, participants perspectives on how they've been able to to use the knowledge and the skills and the strategies that we've been talking about during this program and put them into practice in their everyday lives um, because i think that's the most important bit about these sorts of programs is is that it must make a real difference to people's day-to-day -day lives can they actually take the things they've learned put them into practice uh, and benefit from them so those are the areas that we're particularly interested in exploring A bit of uh, anecdotal feedback obviously although we haven't started doing any formal interviews yet we uh, we do talk to uh, the participants during the during the program and some of the things that people have been saying uh, um, I think there have been some certainly some positives and some negatives about about managing things online so one of the uh, one of the positives that a number of people have mentioned are, are simply the geographical considerations where we have a big catchment as a as a pain management service we're based in Hyde Hospital um, but we spread up to Eastley, Moor Green in the uh, in the Hedge End area and so quite a few people have said well look actually I'd have really struggled to uh, to come to Hyde in the New Forest every Thursday but actually being able to sit at home and access the, pro the program from my computer has made it much more manageable. Um, we have had differing responses in terms of people's confidence with using the internet technology and again i think this is quite um this is quite a changeable area in the sense that a year and a half ago i had never heard of zoom and and i think there's probably quite a few other people in the country like that i think i think a lot of people who maybe a year or two ago would have considered themselves um not very confident in using internet technology are now becoming more confident but certainly that that does sometimes impact on on people's comfort and confidence with accessing the program um, so we, we have to be uh, I think we have to be conscious of that and, and make things as as easy to use as possible for our patients um, the the other area that we've had a bit of feedback about has been people's personal responses so not just their confidence with using the internet but how being on the internet impacts them on a personal level um, and, and again some people have found that quite difficult some people find it quite hard to to have a personal interaction to feel the same about having a chat when they're online um, and i can certainly understand that um, interestingly other people uh, and some people in our groups have raised this have found that it gives them a bit more confidence and i think particularly some people who would have found it very hard to sit in a room with 14 other people have sometimes found it easier to be online um, within their own home um, and, and perhaps have a little bit more control about how much or how little they want to uh, um, to engage and to put themselves um, out of their comfort zone. Uh, so those are some of the things that, that people have been telling us 
uh, already. Um, but as I say, it would be much, it would be very useful to go into much more depth with the interviews and, and find out a, a bit more about what's what's happening for people. So I've already mentioned this really, but the key topics and the key questions that we have for participants are about their perceptions and experiences. And we are looking to ask questions such as what was my overall experience of the program? How was this affected by the online format? So we're particularly wanting to know about how the change from face to face working to going online has uh, has impacted on uh, on our, uh, our participants experiences. And then around capacity to self manage. Um, what do we mean by self management? Has the program changed the way participants manage their own condition? Uh, and again, how has this been affected by doing things online? We also want to ask questions about their physical function and activity levels. So is the function, is their physical activity different since the group? How did the online group help change my physical activity levels? Um, I mentioned earlier the barriers and facilitators to engagement. So what was difficult about engaging in the online format of the group and did anything make it easier to engage? And then finally, the uh, the use of knowledge, skills and strategies. How have uh, how have our participants put into practice the skills and strategies they've learned on the online program? And did the uh, did doing the group online make it easier or harder to put these skills and strategies into practice? So those are the key questions that we are planning to ask. I now I have also prepared a, a much more detailed topic guide for the interviews. Um, which uses those questions and other questions really to prompt the researcher, so myself and my um, fellow interviewer, to, um, to to try and get the most out of the interview that we possibly can. Uh, and that's something I'd very happily share with people if they are um, happy to have a look at it. Um, what would be really helpful for us is perhaps some feedback about whether you feel the topics in the study will help sufficiently improve our understanding of the impact of online pain management interventions and how the change to online has has um, uh, has affected uh, people's experience of, of involving in these uh, involving themselves in pain management groups and also if you have any particular suggestions around the questions i've mentioned a few of the questions already that we're planning to ask are there particular questions that you feel would be useful to ask and as, as I've said in the uh, slide there, if anyone would like to review the full topic guide um, and perhaps go into a bit more detail about the phrasing of the questions, what questions might be unhelpful or what questions might be included that are more useful, then that would be really uh, obviously very much appreciated by uh, myself and the rest of the research team. Um, I am conscious that I've talked a lot now, so it's probably just uh, time to mention the the next steps um tell you a little bit more about the research team and we'll uh, we'll pause there um so the next steps really for the research from today's group um is to continue to amend the the study protocol protocol the design particularly the topic guide so the questions that we're going to ask in these interviews try and get them um as good as possible before we actually start the interviews we're going through the process of submitting for ethics approval um, via uh, the trust in the NHS ethics system um, and then over the next few months we are hoping to complete our systematic review that's the review of the for the existing evidence and the interviews uh, and then in the longer run um, firstly the results that we get from this research will certainly um, inform our own redesign of the of the pain management program we're we're delivering within the service um, but beyond that I'm hoping that this that we'll be able to share this within the trust and within local organizations that will will help other services um, look at the way they're delivering things online um, really get the best out of the online services as well as making sure that that they understand what works online and what works better face to face um, and equally at a at a wider level we're hoping to to share these uh, share the information that we get from the research via uh, journals, publishing some articles, potentially 
um, potentially taking to conferences and also organ um, also uh, um, linking in with senior management commissioning organisations within the NHS as well. So we're really hoping that this will will make a big difference on a wider scale as well as informing changes in our own in our own service. Um, and then finally, there's the research team, myself and Lindsay, um, who you've already met, and then uh, Dr. Dr. Hazelgrove, Dr. Jane Hazelgrove, who is the pain consultant in our team, Kate Barker, who's another physiotherapist, uh, along with myself in the team, and uh, Dr. Ewan Sadler, who is the associate professor from the School of Health Sciences at Southampton. Um, I really will stop talking now because I've talked a lot um, and uh, over to everyone else for any questions or thoughts. <laughs>